Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I was inspired to, to do something different, to really convey a message of, uh, of a world that we live, live in, and that includes sharks. You know what, uh, I love what he said. He said a very awesome statement that I wrote down. He said, don't back down from the sharks. Everybody look at someone and say, don't back down from the sharks. And I'll explain what that means in the next few weeks as we keep coming here on Sunday. You're going to love this series. But it's true. When you think about sharks, you think that, number one, man, they're so captivating. They literally take you from, from fear to fascination, right? For example, I uh, recently went and I, I did something that was on my bucket list, and that was to go kayak fishing. And if you've never done that and you like fishing, do it. It's awesome. But I remember being about 10 miles out of shore, and, uh, and I made out there. I had to get past the waves, and, and it, it, was, it was some work. And, uh, but I never tipped over, never fell off. It was awesome, and I caught fish. But then while I was fishing, right under my kayak comes this five-foot leopard shark and literally just, just hugs up against my kayak. And let me tell you something, my thoughts started just running like crazy, like, oh, my God, I'm going to fall off this boat. Oh, my God, this shark's going to come back and tip it over. Oh, my God. And you know what? That's what happens with us as God's people. We live in this world that's filled with sharks. And so many times we can not only have fear, but there's also this fascination of what if. Have you ever thought about what if I were to truly just believe God, trust God, and just went all in for him. What if I just really believe that God has a, like a supernatural plan for my life? Because there's plans and then there's supernatural plans. And supernatural plans look nothing like our plan. And so we go from fear to fascination. We go from intrigued to intimidation. And all of a sudden you start having all these thoughts racing in your mind. And though we're memorized by all of the beauty of this, like if you've ever been to Maui or any part of Hawaii, you, my first day of being in Hawaii, the first time I went there, I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this water. It's like crystal blue. Then I went to the waters in Mexico, which are way better than Hawaii. And, and I was like, oh, my God, I, I just can't, I can't. And you just get mad. And then you're down there, and then you start seeing big fish, and you get a little freaked out. But it's, it's the truth. Listen, when God calls you to do something, when God paints a picture in your mind and in your heart, it looks so fascinating. Like, wow, God, you really want to do that with my life? Until you start doing it, and then you get bit. Come on. It happens in life. Life happens. Sometimes you get bit. But what happens is this, is that when you get bit by the sharks of life, you get paralyzed. You begin to allow this fear to grip your life. And listen, everyone has some, some form of fear in their life. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter. The most successful person in this life has fear. Everyone experiences fear. Fear is not an evil thing. Fear is an emotion that we all experience at some point in life. However, there is a type of fear that can grip you. Sharks love to grip. You know what? Only in Mexico can you buy something like this. <laughs> I was in Mexico recently uh, speaking to about 60 pastors, and, and while I was there, I was walking by, like, their, their little pueblo, and these were hanging inside by the beach. And this was just hanging. I'm like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. It's perfect for Shark Week. But, man, this is legit. This is real. And, and, and so, so many people, if you even begin to touch this, I know, I feel like I was thinking in, in, in the morning when I was preparing just the final thoughts of my message, I'm like, what if I pass this around like share time? Wouldn't that be awesome? But I'm not going to do it. But I have, I have literally been doing this like for the, like, like the past three days and just like, I'm like, man, what if a shark like this got, got on me and just like started, it would rip the heck out of you. If you touch the sharpness of these teeth, oh my Lord. But how many of us in life, man, we started out, we obeyed God, we answered the call, and we're going, and we're living, and we're doing what God, and then you get bit. Listen, Jesus never promised that you wouldn't face trials, but he did promise I'll be with you. He did promise that. Hey, here's a fun fact. How about this? Um, people are, 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 are most commonly uh, to die 
by a coconut falling off of a tree than to be killed by a shark in any part of the world. And, and that's in Asia. So I know that there's all these things that we've, you know, when you see movies like Jaws and, and, and Blue and all these, it intimidates you. You just start thinking like, man, I don't want to get in the water. And, and that's what happens with most of us is that we experience or we see someone else's experience, someone else's trauma, and then we get so scared because what if that happens to me? And so I, I want to really hit this whole thing called fear today. And I want you to please listen because every single one of us have something that we're afraid about. It could be that you're afraid to go to the next level. Maybe right now you're doing great in business and you know what? You're just comfortable like, hey, nobody rocked the boat. It's, too, it's going really good. But how many know that God wants to rock your boat? God wants you to, to, to advance. God wants you to, 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 to be more effective, be more influential. God wants you to do things that will help others. God didn't create you with all these gifts and these talents and, and these wonderful ideas just for you to stop and then just be comfortable. When you get comfortable with God, that's dangerous. Then you start getting complacent, and then that's when you start compromising. And so God wants us to stay in that place where we're always saying, okay, God, what is it that you want with my life? Never get to a place where you feel like I've arrived. When you feel like you've arrived, you're in trouble. That means that God can't even speak something new into your heart. When you feel like, man, I, I'm good, I'm well, I got it all together, man, I'm telling you, God wants more for your life. But so many times... It's, it's really bound to fear. We're, we're dealing with these different fear, these different emotions, and then it just begins to just kind of just weigh us down. And uh, God's saying this, listen, James 4, 8, because I believe that God is the perfect repellent for sharks in this world. Here's what he says. He says, come near to God, and he will come near to you. In other words, he's saying, start swimming towards God. So many of us are swimming away from God. We're just like, no, I don't want God. We swim away from God. But let me tell you something. How is that working for you? Because for many years as an atheist, okay, as an atheist, I was running away from God. I said, there is no God. Anytime any religious people would come, I'd just like, oh, I'd get bothered, annoyed, etc. But let me tell you something. Why does God want us to draw near to him? Why? Why would he want me to draw near? Because he knows that if you don't draw near to him, eventually you get swept away. And I constantly was being swept away with life. And it took a, a very traumatic moment in our life where my little girl, uh, Alexis, was dying. And she had a horrible blood disease. And let me tell you something. Doctors couldn't help me. People couldn't help me. No one could help me. But then I started swimming towards God, the one I did not believe in. But I said, man, if there is a God, I'm just going to swim to him. And let me tell you something. When I got to God, he rescued he swam towards me as well. And so many times we're just waiting, God, you swim to me. God's like, nope, you swim to me first. Draw near to me and then I'll draw near to you. See, it starts with a personal decision that I'm going to begin to pursue God. Now, I, I don't know what your shark is in life right now. But let me tell you something. One of the big places where the attack begins is in your thought life. Thoughts of fear, thoughts of intimidation. You get all the what ifs. God tells you to do something, you're like, well, what if I fail? Well, let me tell you something. You are going to fail in life. But let me tell you, every failure in life builds character inside of you. It makes you a stronger person. It makes you a wiser person. It makes you a more diligent person. When you have failed through life, let me tell you something, you get stronger in life. And you have to accept the fact that if you're going to do anything in this world for God, sharks come with it. Everyone has a shark in their life. So we have these thoughts that just come to grip us. Thoughts like, man, I, I'm, I'm too old or I'm too young. You know, thoughts like, you know what, is this going to be the rest of my life? Uh, thoughts like, how am I going to retire my future? And we have all these different thoughts. Every single one of us deal with the four F's of life. Come on, we have the thoughts of finances. Maybe someone here today, you're struggling financially. You're, you're barely making it right now. You got more month than you do paycheck. And you're constantly just struggling. And you're just like, how, how am I going to continue to live? And then you hear what happens in Houston. And then now they're ta talking in the news saying how gas prices are going to, you know, just go up high. And you're just like, man, I can barely afford it right now. And so we have these fears of just finances, especially 
you know, people that are already in their 60s, 70s, they're just wondering, man, how much longer am I going to work? And so fear grips you from a new God idea. How about family? That's another F. Maybe you have family issues. Maybe your kids are gone wild. Come on, your kids are going cray-cray. I don't know. Maybe, maybe listen, maybe your marriage is in, is, in, is in ruins right now. Maybe it's just all falling apart, and you're just like, man, is this ever going to get better? That's fear that grips you. There's no hope in fear. There's no hope in fear whatsoever. And it doesn't have to be something as big as family. But you know what? It can be as simple as your future. You're probably a young person sitting here today just wondering, you know what? I'm already 24 years old. I, 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 I haven't gone to college. I don't have a, a, a trade for, for work. I'm, I'm nervous. Listen, you're putting so much effort and strength and, and, and just mental, uh, 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 you know, strength on this idea of not being able to instead of just putting your faith and just saying god I, I i know i can do something greater than what i'm doing right now in this life are you hearing me and so you have all these different thoughts in life your friendships come on friendships can also be a big fear all of a sudden you got crazy stuff happening in friendships and then like what's going to happen now you know there's a great verse I, i'm going to hit friendships real soon during shark week but there's a verse in galatians 5 that says and do not bite each other I'll tell you, Christians are like the greatest sharks of life. They just bite, bite. What happened with, with Joel Osteen in, in, in Lakewood Church, my God, it's not even the world that was talking smack about Christianity. It was Christians smacking him down, biting. Come on, Paul said, do not bite each other. Do not be argumentative. Do not quarrel amongst each other. And so every time you quarrel, every time you argue with a brother or sister, man, you're just biting. And I know every single one of us at some point, we have been bit by a situation, whether it's a person who, who intentionally did it to hurt you or whether it was accidentally you were at the wrong place, wrong time, and you got bit. And then all of a sudden now you're just paralyzed with moving forward. forward. But life is swimming with sharks. Life is swimming with sharks. You just have to accept that. The faster you accept that, the quicker God can get you to the final destination where you need to be. We all have sharks in our life. Are you hearing me? Okay, look at this. I, I, I want to I wanna let you know that when you learn to, to face your fear because you have to, what happens is fear will begin to dissipate. Look at what 2 Timothy 1.7 says. I love this verse. It says, God gave us his spirit. Aren't you glad that we have the spirit of God in us? Man, he gave us his spirit. Look, and the spirit, and the spirit doesn't make us weak and fearful. Instead, everybody say instead. He says, instead, the spirit gives us power and love. And you know what? Obviously, what contradicts that is fear. God says, wait a minute, Mauricio, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. Yeah, but God, you don't, you don't realize my issue, my problem, my fear is real. It's, it's, it's legit. Well, guess what? Even in the midst of whatever you're facing, God still says, but my spirit is still in you. And I didn't give you that spirit. So obviously, if he didn't give me that spirit, then who did? Then who gave me that spirit of fear? Well, I can tell you this much. Satan is the perfect shark who instills fear in people. He comes to steal, kill, destroy, but God says this, but I come to give you life. And so he says, so I didn't give you a spirit of, of weakness or, or fearfulness. Instead, the spirit gives us power and, and love, and he helps us control ourselves. He helps us control our minds. Another uh, 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 Bible verse, it says, cast down every thought and every vain imagination. Every say imagination. Listen, fear simply is an imagination, guys. I'll give you an acronym for fear. Put this up on the screens. Look at this. Fear is simply this. It's false evidence appearing real. It really is. Think about it. When I was in that kayak, man, I had false evidence that was appearing real. Like, what if, what if the shark bumps me off this boat? What if the shark jumps on top of the boat? Uh, what if I start paddling and then all of a sudden I forget to paddle and I paddled wrong and then I, like, all these, all these appearances, all these false ideas, the, these imaginations that I've created in my own head are really just stopping me from having just an awesome day. 
listen, on that day, I just wanted to rest with God, enjoy, you know, some God time and go fishing and chill. Isn't it amazing how difficult it is nowadays to have any rest at all, any peace, because we're always being instilled with some form of fear. And so false evidence appearing real. What's your shark right now? We all go through something in life. Every single one of us will go. We're all swimming through sharks. But let me tell you something. It's not, it's not by accident, and, and you're going to make it to your destination because in order to get somewhere, you got to swim through it. We're all going to swim through some stuff with sharks. Why? Because we live in a world filled with them. And you will get bit. But don't shut God out because you are convinced that he can't help. Don't shut God out. Draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. So many of us have already convinced ourselves that God can't help me in this situation. I hear it over and over again. People talk about their problems, and nothing wrong with that, okay? Talk about your problems. But then it's almost like, but you're already convinced that no one can help you, especially God. Listen, if anybody can help you, God can help you. The question is, will you let him help you? You're so convinced that you can't get out of the situation. Well, guess what? You won't be able to get out of the situation because you believe more in the fear than you do in your God. And you know what? There's so many people in the Bible that have been a great example of, of this. And, and you know what? You may be here today and say, well, you know what, Pastor? Man, I've had a big chunk taken out of my life. We've all had a chunk taken out of our life. Every single one of us have experienced some form of trauma here. Every person. It doesn't matter who you are. Every single person has experienced some form of trauma. But I can tell you this much, that God does not want you to stay there. Though Moses, we know the story of Moses. Moses, he's, he's a child. He's born. I mean, talk about trauma. All his, his family and his relatives are all murdered. They're all killed. And then the daughter of Pharaoh comes and finds him and takes him in as a son. And here's what happens. Now Moses is learning the tradition of, of the Egyptians. And he grows up in the house of Pharaoh. And, and before you know it, man, he just starts, like, being just like them. And then realizes, wait a minute, God, he has a God moment in his life. And God says, I never called you to be that. I never. See, so many of us are swimming with sharks right now. Do you know that in California? And I'm not trying to scare you, but here's the fact, okay? In California, if any of you go to any beach, there's always sharks in there. I lately been fishing, and I've been catching baby sharks. As a matter of fact, a fun fact is this, is that the shores are sharks' nursery. And I was wondering, I was fishing with uh, Pastor Anthony a few times, and man, I've been catching tiger sharks like crazy lately. But it's a nursery where they come and they feed right there. And that's the place where they just kind of learn how to, you know, bite. <laughs> they learn how to eat. They learn how to survive. But so many of us right now, man, we don't even know that right now, if you've ever been in the water, you have been in the midst of sharks. All of us have been in the middle of sharks. You just don't know it. Why? Because I can't see them. It's kind of like Jesus. You know what? I didn't know there was a devil until Jesus saved me, rescued me, opened my eyes, removed the veil. And then I'm like, oh, my God, there's a devil. And he's a bad devil. And he destroys life. Oh, my God. Well, same thing. Once you realize that there are sharks in this world, you're going to realize that no matter what I do in this life, if it's going to be worthwhile, I'm going to get attacked. And I'm going to get bit by stuff. But that's okay. And so Moses is at this place where he finally has this connection with God. And, and we know that he's trying to now find his identity. And then he helps out a fellow brother and, uh, by, by, from this soldier that was Pharaoh's soldier. And he accidentally kills the guy to protect an Israelite. And then he, he's like, he freaks out. And he's like, oh, my God, they're going to kill me. And then he leaves and he runs into the desert. And what does he do in the desert? He's running for his life for 40 years of his life. Do you know that you can be instilled with fear for many, many years and not even know it and think that, you know what, I've learned to coexist with it. And so Moses is now in the desert and he's just kind of hanging out. And then, you know what, I truly believe, and you'll never know the whole story, but I, I, I really believe as I read the scriptures that Moses obviously started drawing near to God because one day he had a conversation with God. He said, God, are you still there? And you know what God did? He responded by a burning bush. And then God starts speaking to Moses. He says, Moses, 
I want to I want to use your life, Moses. I want to I want to take you into into Egypt, right where you started, and I want you to deliver my people, and and you're going to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And let me tell you something, and this will be a whole other sermon, but uh, Moses gives God five excuses of why he can't do it. What happened to him? Fear. You see, his past experience was dictating his present decision. And that's what happens with people's lives. So Moses is like, God, I can't do it because of this, and I can't do it because of that, I can't do it. And you know what I love about God is that God is compassionate towards every single one of our traumas. You know, God didn't start yelling at Moses, you idiot, pay attention. I'm telling you, I'll be with you. No, he was like, no, hey, Moses. So he listened. God listens to your complaints. Aren't you glad that he listens? He listens, listens to your fears. He, he listens to you, but he doesn't accept them. And so God begins to listen to what Moses had to say, and he's giving all of the excuses for being timid and afraid. But God understood his pain and his trauma from his past. But also, let me tell you something, but God loved Moses way too much to let him stay stuck in that pain. And God loves you way too much to let you stay right where you're at in pain. Some of you have not moved forward from a past Divorce. Some of you have not moved forward from a, a, a past business failure. Some of you have not moved forward because you and your kids are at odds. Some of you have not moved forward because of whatever. You finished the sentence. But God loves you so much that he is tired of seeing you in the water, in the ocean, wounded and just bleeding to death. I, I preached this last week. Your wounds, your, your wounds can become your weapon. Be very careful. What do I mean by that? Well, Let's say someone wounded you. Let's say it was a brother or sister and someone you trusted with, with your life. And then they come behind you and they betray you. And they bite, bite, bite. And they just tear you up. And then all of a, all of a sudden, your weapon now becomes, I'm going to create shields now. And I'm not letting nobody in. So your wound becomes your weapon against you and also against other people. And so here you have God is telling Moses, okay, listen, enough, Mosey. We've already talked, okay? And you're going to go, and it's going to be uh, bomb.com. It's going to be amazing. And, uh, and so he realized that shark bites create character. That's what Moses really, l l let me show you some points. Moses learned that God was 100% faithful and that he could trust him with his life. I mean, through the experience of excuses, of all the fears, of all the why nots, he finally learned that, whoa, wait a minute. You know what? God is really 100% for me. Now, most of us, I can tell you this right now, most of us sitting in this room, we're not 100% for God. Don't get mad at me. It's just the truth. Some of us are only 50% in with God. Some of us are at 60%. Someone can't, uh, can't even turn off our watch thing because, I don't know, <laughs> you're off. If you're there, turn it off. Get it out, turn it off. <laughs> so listen, God's 100% in with you. God is 100%. God's not in 75% for you. God's not a quarter in. God, God's 100%. He's for you. Moses realized that as he started going, and in his going, he was growing with God. 100%. Number two, look at this. Moses learned how to hear from God and not second guess himself. You know what? Let me tell you something. Um, I'm not one of those pastors that says, God told me, God told me, God told me. But I do believe that God speaks. I believe that God speaks audibly. Does he always speak audibly? Uh, no, but he does. Not always, but he does. But let me tell you something. But he always speaks in his word. Every time you open your Bible, God is speaking to you. You know, so many times people just run after prophets. Let me tell you something. You want a true prophetic word, open your Bible, and that word will never fail you. I promise you. So he, Moses, learned how to hear from God and not second guess himself. So many times we won't do something because we second guess God. You have to be all in for God, and when you're all in for God, you'll stop making excuses of why you can't be faithful to him. You'll stop making excuses of why you can't serve him. You'll stop making excuses of why you don't believe him. Listen, once you're all in for God and you believe 100% that he's behind you, man, you don't care. You just go for it. Next point, look at this. Moses learned how to handle conflict and confront people when they were wrong. So many people are just so afraid to just deal with people's junk. Listen, you don't have to run away or swim away from sharks. 
Man, you got to stand up to them. And sometimes you have to call wrong, wrong. Now, I know you got to pick and choose your battles, but listen, at some point, you have to be the person that learns how to handle conflict. And when you're living in the world, there will be conflict. In family, there's conflict. In business, there's conflict. In church, <laughs> there's conflict. No, that shouldn't happen in church. Oh, no, it always happens in church. Let me, know, let me tell you, praise Jesus. Okay, next one, look at this. Moses learned that God's plan and purpose for his life was better than what he could ever have planned himself. I'll tell you right now, you can live your plan, and that's cool. Listen, that's cool. Many of us, I lived my plan for many years. Many years I was doing my thing. It was me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. But let me tell you something. Sometimes your dream has to die in order for God's dream to live. My dream died, his dream lives, right? You're talking to a guy who was in business and went out of business into ministry. How does that work? God's plan. Don't leave your business and go to ministry <laughs> unless you're called. <laughs> Moses learned persistence and to never give up. Do you realize that when you finally decide to just go for it, just no matter what you're experiencing, no matter what you're feeling, you are creating this character of persistence and I never quit and I never give up, never, never, never. That's the kind of spirit God placed inside of you. But we have to believe that. Do I have any other points there? Look at this. Moses learned to stay focused on his goal and not give in to distractions. Let me tell you something. Uh, as I've been fishing a lot more lately, I've been trying to find a, a quiet place, a peaceful place. So I took on fishing again. I used to fish a lot before, and I quit, and I just got into work mode, work, work, work. And now I'm just like, okay, Melissa, you need some, you need some chill time. And so now when I fish, most people fish right off the sand off the shore. Heck no. I like going way in there. So I go like waist deep. But my water, my waters are murky many times. And in Ventura Beach, man, there's great white sharks, by the way. And so let me tell you, at first, I'm trying to get some rest. I'm in halfway right there in the waist. And sometimes, let me tell you this, my mind starts thinking, what if there's a shark that just ran by my legs? What if there's a little gray? You know, what if, what if? What if that five-foot leopard shark chased me all the way here? You know, you start thinking all the, and you're just trying to rest with God. You're just trying to have a good time. God wants to have a good time with you, but you know what he does? He brings distractions. God's trying to heal you, and he distracts you. Satan distracts you. He tells you, you're not going to make it. You're not going to change. Your situation will never get better. And, and that's what he does. He, but Moses learned to stay focused. What do you have to do when you fish, man? You stay focused. Man, I'm here to have fun. Hey, God, what's up? Man, if God be for me, what shark can be against me? Amen? Huh? Greater is he that's in me than the shark that's in this water. Right? So you got to start speaking the word of God and say, God, I'm not afraid of this. You got my back. You want me to rest and enjoy this fishing time. But so many times while you're doing God work, while you're doing whatever it is that God has called you to do, you're stressed out. Moses learned to, to take a chill pill with God. Next one. Moses learned how to embrace mistakes and failure to propel him forward. So many times we make mistakes or we fail in business and we quit. And we don't try again. No, that shouldn't be that way. We should just continue to be persistent and, and, and see what God would do. Next one. Moses learned to base his identity on God and not find security in himself. Come on, find your identity in God. you got to know who you are in Christ. Moses also learned not to give in to fear, but to do it afraid. There's such thing as doing something afraid. Listen, you may start doing it afraid, but eventually you'll be more confident and more convinced that I was meant for this. I was meant for this. You know, that's why we do what we do with our kids. Felicia does such a, can we give Felicia, Pastor Felicia, a very big hand? She's working with three-year-olds, three-year-olds and up. And let me tell you something. She is already training them that when you come on this platform, you're using your gift for God and you have nothing to be afraid about. And then all of a sudden they start doing their little, uh, what, what, what's uh, Vanessa's daughter's name again? Alina. Oh, my God. Alina. Alina, she choreographed her own little dance. You know, they were offering to help her and everything. She's like, no, I got this. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, Dang. I wish I had that kind of, like, oh, faith. I don't even know how old she is. But, man, she's choreographing her own little dance. For who? For Jesus. 
God wants you to choreograph your life with him. Come on, get your hula on. <laughs> Moses learned that God loved and accepted him just the way he was, insecurities and all. So many of us are like, well, let me just get my life right with God, and then I'll give my life to God. Let me tell you something. You're never going to get your life right until you give it to God. Oh, let me get it all together. Let me, I'll start going to church first. I'll, listen, your ducks will never be in a row. You have to come to God as you are. That's why this church is the perfect place for imperfect people. Amen? The moment you walked in, you jacked this church up. <laughs> all I got to say, you messed us up. That's all of us, right? The day one, before any of you walked in, I walked in, I jacked this church up. Why? Because we're imperfect. But God will take your imperfections and he'll perfect you for awesome things. Make a decision today that I'm going to draw close to God and I'm going to surrender my fears to him and I'm going to let him challenge me to go to new heights with him. Challenge yourself. God, I'm done being afraid because all of you right now, you have a shark that keeps festering and swimming around you. Like it or not. You got to accept that. I believe that if Moses was preaching to you and me today here at Elevate Church, I believe that Moses would say, number one, just be yourself, man. Stop trying to be everybody else. Be the best you. Be you. Be the you that God called you to be. Number two, he would probably say, you know what? If you're going to do it, just do it afraid. What are you afraid of? What if I fail? What if you don't? Yeah, but what if I fail? You probably will. But you'll build character. Huh? Oh, yeah. It just start agreeing. If people start saying, I'm going to fail. You know what? You are going to fail. You suck. <laughs> They're going to be like, what? I don't suck. Well, I'm just saying what you said. You fail and you suck. No, I don't. And see, what I'm doing is reverse psychology. I'm really just, now they're convincing themselves, wait a minute, I'm going to make it. What are you saying? Huh? I double dog dare you. The next time someone tells you, I'm afraid. You know who you are. You're so scared. You scared you can. And, and then just jack them up right there. They're going to be like, expect resistance. I believe that Moses would say, expect resistance. You know when you get a bite, there's resistance. <sighs> expect it. Expect the bites. The bites of life are going to happen. Number four, I bet you he would say this, try, 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 try again, again, and again. You don't quit. You don't give up. And you know what? I really believe that Moses understood this series called Shark Week. You know why? Moses knew that he was chum. Not a chum. Chum. He was chum. What's chum? Watch this video real quick. Let me show you chum. When I get bit, I want a song like that while I'm getting bit, right? Like, yeah, just like, such a cool song. Yeah, so listen, I believe that, <laughs> I believe that Moses would say, hey, listen, chum. Why, what's chum? Chum is bait consisting of fish parts, come on, body parts, bone, bone, and blood which attract particularly sharks due to their keen sense of smell. You're chum, guys. Listen, but here's awesome. Chum is not just a negative thing. Chum is also a positive thing because your chum also attracts people far away from God. Let me prove it to you. Luke 22, verse 31 through 32. Look, here's what Jesus says. He says to him, Simon, Simon, meaning Peter. He says, Satan has asked to sift. Everybody say sift. Yeah. I'll just call it sniff. Satan has asked to sniff you as wheat. Another, the real, the real meaning of sift means to examine. Well, that's what sharks do. They examine what they're about to prey on. He will sift you as wheat. And look, all of you disciples like wheat. Did he say some? All of you. He's like, he's going to sift all of you. Huh, but I love this. But he says, but I have prayed for you, Simon. I have prayed that your what? I'm sorry, that your what? Faith. Well, not what? Faith. When you have turned back, help your brothers to be strong. So obviously, you have here, you have Luke, you have Jesus, obviously seeing people that are always running away from trouble. And Jesus says, hey, listen, 
if you would just realize that I have prayed. See, there's one thing when Pastor Felicia prays for me. There's another thing when Jesus prays for me. Jesus is interceding for you, your family, your children, your marriage, your business. Jesus prays for you. And there's no greater prayer word than Jesus. Amen. There's no greater intercessor than Jesus. And so he says, hey, but guess what? I prayed for you, Peter, that your fail will not fail you. You know what's pretty awesome? Uh, for those of you that signed up for the startup, um, and you know what I'm talking about, uh, my good friend who is like that multi-billionaire, he's going to come here and teach the class that we said and how God has taken his life in this shark world to build his kingdom. And he's going to come, and he already said yes, he'll come and hang out with and elevate people that are either starting a business, that have a business, or that feel they're entrepreneurs and they want to do something in business. And uh, But let me tell you something. Why do I share that? Because if Jesus said that your faith will not fail you, let me tell you something. A millionaire knows... A true millionaire knows that he or she can lose everything today, but knows they can get it back. Have you ever heard people say that? Like, I can lose it all, I'll get it all back. You know why? Because millionaires have realized that money never made them. They made the money. See, that's how we need to be with our faith. Our faith is our currency. If I were to lose everything today, God, my faith will help me get it all back and some. God always helps you get things back and some. Not just, what, not just what you lost. He'll give you and some. He'll give you and more. That's our God. And Jesus is saying, hey, listen, and once you realize that your faith won't fail you, now you'll stop swimming away and you'll start swimming to your brothers that you can help as well. So whatever experience you're going through right now, let me tell you something. God is going to use your trauma. God is going to use your pain. God is going to use your, your, your temporary suffering for something greater that you will now be able to help other people in their trauma. Our family hit a tra traumatic moment. My niece was murdered. She was killed. Okay, it was a horrible thing. It was all over the news. It was, it was painful. My sister was just broken and just, ah. But let me, the trauma was real. But as of this day, my sister now has a ministry where she ministers to parents who, who have had children pass away, either killed or just passed away. And so now my sister ministers to people that have been heartbroken by the loss of someone at a very young age. And let me tell you something. Does that mean like, oh, well, God did that to give her a ministry? No, let me tell you something. God turned what the devil meant for bad for something good. And that's our family. I'm talking about our family. I can say that boldly here, okay. This is our family. And so I'm telling you right now, your faith is your currency. And your faith will not fail. Why? Because you're bomb.com? No, because Jesus is praying for you. That's why your faith does not fail. Are you here? So your chum, it not only attracts sharks, but it also attracts people. Look at Luke 4, 18, 19. I'm almost done. This is the spirit of the Lord. Who's, who, whose spirit? See, this is the verse I keep reading. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chummed me. Huh? Because he has chummed me. Because he has anointed me. You see, all of us have a chum in our life. He has chummed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me and sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim to, to the captives liberty and recovery of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Chum is not a bad thing. Chum is a God thing. Yes, will it attract haters? All the time. Since we've opened Elevate Church, I've had a hater just about every year that we've been open. Why? Because we live in a shark world. And haters are going to hate, and lovers are going to love. Right? We're not going to bite. We're going to let our faith not let us fail us. Okay, let me give you these last points. How do I swim with sharks in the world then, Pastor? How do I do this? Glad you asked. Point number one. Number one, look, I took some real facts of swimming with sharks, and I tweaked them for you, church. Ready? Always swim in a group. It's called fellowship. Huh? Because sharks most often attack lone individuals. Hey, listen, Christian, don't isolate. 
You need to get around some other believers like faith. When you're going through something, don't go with the uncle drink a lot and try to get counsel. <laughs> don't, don't do that. You need to find people that, that have faith, that have currency to come and tell you, hey, listen, I know what you can do. This is what happened in my life. This is what I experienced, and this is how I got my breakthrough. Do this, this, and this. Listen, we all need fellowship. That's why we do so many things in church here to create that fellowship in the community. Listen, most visitors, most, most visitors say when they walk in here, they feel like family. Why? That's our culture. They say, man, we just feel the love in here. Why? That's our culture. That's who we are. We are a family of fellowship, and we believe in that, okay? So always swim in a group. Be in a group. Don't be a lone ranger. Number two, don't wander too far from shore or don't wander too far from church. Doing so isolates you and places you away from assistance. Listen, you need to champion the local church. You need a church family. If you have been wandering around, going from church to church to church, stop it. Find a place that you're going to call home. Get your little self planted. And then let God begin to grow you. Amen. You need to stay close to church. You need that. Number three, avoid the water. Avoid the party world at night. You never swim at night in the ocean. Why? Because many sharks are most active at this time and are better able to find you than you are to seeing them. Come on. Don't be out doing nothing after 11 o'clock. Nothing holy happens after 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> huh? You may be in the club, just boom, boom, and they can <laughs> break your leg. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he don't play, man. Number four, don't enter the water don't enter the world if bleeding. Allow God to heal your wounds, guys. Sharks can smell and taste blood and trace it back to its source. Come on. Don't just keep moving forward. Stop and let God heal. Why? you got to stop bleeding. And I've heard sermons, well, you just work it, then you just bleed. No, well, you'll bleed to death. <laughs> yeah, I'll be able to go, but I'll be bleeding and then I'll. Anyways, next one, number five. Don't go into the waters or don't go into places containing sewage. Don't go to places where there's gossip and slander. Ah. I preach this every year and still it happens. It's shocking. Don't go into places containing sewage. Gossip is sewage and it's poison. It's sewage. Why? Because sewage attracts bait fishes. It attracts drama, which in turn attacks Sharks, it, it attracts Satan. We cannot allow gossip and slander in our lives, guys. But I love them. They're my friends. Listen, then you need to change your friends. Because my friends, the people I hang with, and let me tell you something. You can take inventory of my friends. They don't slander nobody. No matter how wrong that person may be. Next one, number six. Don't splash a lot. Don't talk too much. I, I, I. There's nothing worse than a person that just talks and talks and talks and talks and just I and I and we and me and, and, and no. Listen, slow to speak, quick to listen. Talker, always trying to prove yourself. Look what I can do. Look what. Stop it. It's annoying. Don't splash. You attract. Erratic. Go back, please. Erratic movements can attract sharks. Next one, seven. Don't relax just because dolphins, or I'll just say just because someone is a Christian. Why are you dating them? Because they're a Christian. <laughs> what? Yeah, they're Christian, yeah. They go to my church. Listen, sightings of Christians do not indicate the absence of sharks. What does Jesus said? Be careful because in church there will be wolves in sheep's clothing. What? Jesus said it. Don't get mad at me. I know when there's sharks coming in here. That's why what we do here is we always check everyone that works in our children's ministry. We do a criminal background check and we also do a, a, a sex 
predator checks. If they're in the community, we check everything. And let me tell you something. You'll be proud that in our church in seven years, we've only caught one because we did our job. Okay? A sex predator. But we caught the person immediately. Why? Because you know what? I'm not the person. Parents, don't be the parent that, okay, little Johnny, I'll see you at Ivory Life. <laughs> we're in church. We're safe. Yay. No. No. Look out for your kids. Pay attention. Okay? Let's keep going. Next one. If attacked by a shark, the general rule is do whatever it takes to get away. Some people have successfully chosen to be aggressive. Others passive. Some yelled underwater. Others blew bubbles. I don't know why you would blow bubbles. <laughs> That's freaky weird, man. I, I couldn't even think. Blow bubbles. I personally would go down fighting. Philippians 4.13 says this, and I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You guys got this. You can do this. You're not alone. Draw close to me. And God says, and I'll draw close to you. Swim back to God. Because he can rescue you. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.